morning. Daily Gazette. Good morning. Good morning. Margaret? Yeah. No, I don't. No, I've never met her. Picture in the society section with Roger. I'll call you back later, Margaret. Lake 50782. Hello. Good morning, Mrs. Riley. Is Roger in? May I speak to him, please? Yes. Uh, just a moment. Roger. Yes. Tom is on the telephone. I'll be right down. Thanks, Mrs. Riley. Hello, darling. Hello, dear. Are you tired? Your poor brain must be worn out. Huh? From that long business conference last night. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Yeah, it was a big deal. The first real break I've had in a long time. I'll bet it was. Uh, you see, it was uh, one of those things, uh, not a legal problem, eh? My client had no will. I'll bet she didn't. Uh, you see, there were, th there were three sets of errors from three separate and distinct marriages. Uh, it made it very complicated, but I finally solved it with a habeas corpus. In an evening gown. It must be a new legal twist. Yeah. Oh. No, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Anna. It's really very simple. But I'm not. You can take your three sets of errors and your habeas corpus and... Anne! 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 You're going to let your tongue trip you up yet. What are you going to say to disprove all this? Mona Brooks and Guest. That's me. At least they might have said with a struggling young attorney trying to get along. <laughs> I look kind of scared, don't I? Oh, and it's scared you should be. Ah, oh, don't worry about Anne. It'll be all right as soon as I explain. We're going to marry her, aren't we? Sure we are. I had me heart tall set in it. And before me hand is too old to bake the wedding cake. Well, you'll have to be nimble with your blarney, me boy. Ah, oh, Mrs. Riley, I don't know what I'd do without you. <laughs> she in? Yeah. What's the matter, temper bad? She was all right earlier this morning, but she's biting heads off now. You. Just a minute, Johnny. I'll unlock the door. Hello, Ann. Uh, what's the idea of locking the door? Didn't want to be disturbed by a certain party. Said party of the first part? Perhaps he thinks so. Uh-oh. At least he had the decency to be frightened. Couldn't take me to see Argentine Serenade with my own passes. Had to work on a brief. Oh, if only he hadn't lied to me. Well, why don't you forget about him? He's no good for you. I know, Johnny. That's what I keep telling myself in 70-point type. It's no use. Well, that's what I came in here to talk to you about, Ann. What do you mean? I hoped you'd be mad enough at Andrews to quit working for my father. Run away with me and live unhappily ever after. Or perhaps not so unhappily. You're sweet, Johnny, but... But you're not that mad. <laughs> okay, Ann. But you'll be hearing from me through the Lovelorn column. Uh, shall I? Yes? Oh, oh, he is. 
Well, Mr. Andrews knows exactly where I want to see him. Miss Thompson says she's very busy. She can't be disturbed by anyone. Yes, I heard her. Tell me, why does everyone seem to think the camera was such a great invention? Well, it wasn't it? I don't think so. Hello, Johnny. Hello, Andrews. I'm afraid it's no use. You're in the doghouse. You're telling me it's the first doghouse I've ever seen with an eight ball in it. How far in the camera? Oh, about, uh, uh, far enough. She told me so just before I proposed. Pro proposed? She didn't. Nope, uh, you're still top man, but this isn't the time to get her to admit it. She's, uh, locked the door to keep you out. And she bragged about it to you. Oh, no, I volunteered to lock it for her. If you ask me, Mr. Andrews, he's in love with her. I wouldn't want to be quoted, seeing as how he's the boss's son. Don't worry, it'll be our secret. Look, will you try some more? It's no use. She won't talk to you. Oh, yes, she will. Yes? Who? All right, put him on. Hello? Yes, I'm Ann Thompson. Yes. But who are you? That don't make no difference, lady. You don't know me, and I don't know you. But I read your column, and I can see you for the underdog. And that's me, lady. I'm desperate. Tell me what the trouble is. Possibly I can do something for you. No, that ain't why I called you. Nobody can do nothing for me. But I can do something for you, lady. Yeah, for you. You're a right guy, and that's why I'm going to give you this scoop. Scoop? What kind of scoop? Well, you can call it crime don't pay. It's the finish of a guy who thought he was too big for the law. That's me too, lady, but I was wrong. And that's why I'm going to end it all. You don't know what you're saying. You don't. You can't. Well, you can't just think of yourself. There are others. There's, there's your family. Your... Family? What family? Yeah, sure, I had a family once, but that was before I went crazy and tried to be a big shot. Now, listen, lady, I ain't beefing. I just played the brakes, and they went against me. Listen, please, don't hang up. You can still get the brakes. This is America, the land of opportunity. Oh, please, please, let me talk to you before you do anything. It's no use, lady. For a guy like me, there ain't no land of opportunity. Nobody's got no use for a jailbird. He's poisoned, just like the stuff I got in this bottle. So that's why I called you. The scope of your life inside of five minutes, right outside of your own building. But don't call no cops. If you do, I'll pull it somewhere else. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Why, hello, Ann. The girl upstairs told me you were all tied up with an important assignment. Couldn't see anybody. She wanted to spare your feelings. That doesn't begin to express what I asked her to tell you. Get yeah. out of my way. A man's going to commit suicide any minute. Suicide? Who? I don't know who, but he's going to do it right here in front of this building. He told me so over the telephone. Oh, but he mustn't. We won't let him. Here, you watch in that direction. I'll watch in this. It's that silly picture in the paper. Mona Brooks doesn't mean a thing to me. It was strictly business. I know the type. She'll give you the business. You're being unreasonable. Am I? It isn't Mona that interested me, it's her father. An attorney has to meet the right people. You want me to get to the top, don't you? The trouble with you is you want to start at the top. I'm not angry because you went out with another woman, but you didn't have to lie to me. Turn around and keep your eyes in that direction. Oh, yes, I forgot. To get back to what we were talking about, you don't understand. I understand this much. You made up your mind, and nothing's going to stop you, even if you have to step on a few toes. Well, I don't like the route. It isn't the upgrade I mind, I'd like that. But it would be awful to start at the top and take the slide down with you. <gasps> oh, Mr. Please, don't drink that, you mustn't. What's the matter, lady? That's medicine for my throat, doctor's orders. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I thought... <laughs> Why, you... Oh. Hey, Ann, what... <laughs> okay, you stay on the job. Uh, hello, hold it. Jackson, you and the boys hurry down to City Hall. Dave Turner's just been shot on his way to grand jury. Dave Turner? Holy mackerel, he's a state star witness in this new crime ring investigation. Not anymore, he isn't. Dixie Nelson got him first. Now get going. Yes, sir. Hello? What's all the excitement? You'll read it in the Gazette.
saw your picture in the society section today, Mr. Andrews. You're getting to be quite important. It was nothing at all. I was just a fill-in between a wedding and a tea. Oh, go on. I'll bet you'll be getting a lot of publicity from now on. Well, if I can help it, I won't. young fellow. You know who this is? No. Well, he's one of the most dangerous gunmen in the country. Dixon C. Nelson? Oh, all right. Come on, you. Oh, boss. Oh, boss. Mrs. Riley, tell us something about him. What does he like for breakfast? Yeah, what college he go to? Did he ever play football? Oh, please, you'll have to ask him. I don't know. Well, where is he? He's not at home. Come back tomorrow. The hottest story of the end. She tells us to come back tomorrow. Cut, go on. Get out of here before I lose my temper. I'm a busy woman. Now, Mrs. Riley, just a minute. Can't you give us one or two words? Uh, it's no use saying she's a busy woman. Oh, come in and glory be. I never knew such a good man. Mrs. Riley, where's Roger? What's happened to him? He's upstairs with me assigned to the job of showing away the report. Is he all right? Is he all right? Of course he's all right. And I could stake my life is a drop of Irish blood in his veins. Why, why no one but a Mick could tackle the like of Dixie Nelson and, and come out of it without a scratch. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, to do his hat good to know you're here. Roger, I'm here to see you. I'll be right down. I hate to disturb you, but my editor thinks you're worth a whole car. Human interest, hero stuff. Okay, Ann. Anything to accommodate. You ain't kidding pretty Riley, Ann. What do you mean? Oh, you know what I mean. As you came through the door, I could hear your heart pounding like a kettle drum. It was no editor sent you here, Ann. It was love. You thought maybe Roger was hurt, and, and you were ready and willing to hold his head. Maybe you're right, Mrs. Riley. Sure, I'm right. You know, us women can kid the men. Uh, and sometimes we can kid ourselves. But there's nary a one of us smart enough to kid each other. <laughs> <laughs> obnoxious all of this publicity will be to you, but the boss is absolutely set on a thousand words. So we might as well get it over with. Well, I'll try to, but I don't know if I can make it. Good. What? Let's make this as short as possible. Oh. Now, what were your thoughts as you dashed into the face of possible death? <coughs> Just a minute. <coughs> My lungs. <coughs> How did you feel? Were you frightened? Nervous? Blind with fury? Oh, my arm. My right one, you know. I'm afraid I'll have to learn to write with my left. Oh, an inspirational thought. Hero overcomes handicap. And how about a few more words to the youth of the country? <laughs> Dizzy. The room's going round. Everything's getting dark. Oh, hold on just another minute, please. I can add up a lot of this stuff, but after Say, all... Say, what kind of a woman are you? What have you got for a heart? A printing press. One's been taught to ask questions and get answers. 
Mrs. Riley spoke to me before you did. Oh, 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 wait a minute, Ann. Please, the reason I did it was... I think that'll be all for now, Mr. Andrews. But how about the article? You haven't got the story yet. I know enough about you to write a book if there are any way of getting it past the censors. Hello, this is Andrews. Uh, this is the district attorney. I want to congratulate you, Andrews. Your heroic conduct this afternoon will be an inspiration to the youth of the country. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to get your version of the incident as soon as convenient. Uh, could you come over to my office in, well, say about an hour? Uh, certainly, I'd be glad to. Fine, goodbye. And still, it took a lot of courage to tackle a man with a gun. Well, it all happened so fast, I didn't have much chance to think about it. Yes? Mr. Brooks is here to see you. Oh, send him in. Hello, Roger. How are you, Stephen? Good. Roger, I've been intending to telephone you. Fine piece of work you did this afternoon. An inspiration to the youth of the country. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Well, I see I don't have to introduce you two. Oh, no. My daughter Mona attended to that. Sit down. <clears throat> well, what about it, Stephen? About what? Letting our star witness get killed. The Civic League wants to know what... But, William, we thought that we had taken every precaution. That's the trouble with you and your whole administration. You're always thinking, but not as fast as the hoodlums. Well, perhaps I'd better go. No, wait a minute. I'm here in the interests of the Civic League. That means the interest of every good citizen. Stay where you are, you're one of them. You knew our whole case hinged on Dave Turner, and yet you let the newspapers publish the very day he was to testify before the grand jury. I didn't let them. I don't know how they found it out. You know, I've always respected your... your good intention, Stephen. But it looks as if the job's too big for you. Well, others seem to have that same opinion. This afternoon, the grand jury voted to ask the governor for a special prosecutor. Special prosecutor? Who? I believe they're leaving that up to the governor. So maybe you'd better wait and have your talk with his appointee. I'm sorry, Stephen. Perhaps if you start a stepping on the gas... What gas? Well, there's still Dixie Nelson. He must know as much as Turner did. Yeah, the difference is that Turner was ready to talk. Nelson isn't. Then make him. I'd be glad to if you and your civic lead would show me how. Does that sound like a challenge, Andrews? Well, could be. You think we're a lot of idealists, don't you, Stephen? Good at second guessing, but impractical. You've read my mind. Well, maybe you're right, but I don't think so. Now, you think Nelson can't be made to talk? I'd gamble if I had a chance. You've I'd got it. Get me the sheriff. If you have any luck with Nelson, you might put Turner's daughter, Carol, on your list. Oh, sheriff? I'm sending Mr. Brooks over to the jail to see Dixie Nelson. All right, Mr. Brooks, I'll be back in 10 minutes. Why, you stupid. Why didn't you hire the stadium and sell tickets for your gunplay? What could I do? They were guarding him closer than the mint. It was just tough luck I got caught. It would have been a miracle if you hadn't been caught. No, look. I only followed your orders. I did my job, and now you're going to do yours. Besides, I'm getting lonely in this place. Either you're going to get me out of here, or come in with me. Don't be a fool, Dixie. I don't intend to be. Now sit down. Sit down and let's talk this thing over. You know, getting you out of here isn't going to be easy. Mm. Right now, the city's boiling like a tea kettle. I've just been over to the DA's office and found out the governor's going to appoint a special prosecutor. Well, that, that doesn't look so good. On the contrary, it may be just what we're asking for. So all you've got to do is sit tight. Let me work this out my way. Mm -hmm. I'll sell the Civic League. The Civic League will sell the governor. That's not bad. The governor appoints our own mouthpiece. No, that'd be asking too much, but we'll pick somebody dumb enough to handle. Someone the public will fall for. Got anybody in mind? Yeah. Thanks to you, Dixie, we're going to borrow a hero. 
Hmm? Thank you, sir. Roger, a telegram. Bad news, Roger? I should say not. Listen, the grand jury of your city has requested me to appoint a special prosecutor. He will be expected to prosecute those in custody and more particularly to conduct a thorough investigation and find out who is behind the criminal outrages. The recommendation of numerous forthright citizens prompts me to offer the appointment to you. It's signed by the governor. Oh, oh. God! <laughs> <laughs> I think it needs oiling. Miss Thompson of the Gazette to see you, Mr. Andrews. I'll be just a minute. Then you can go back to your merry-go-round. Sit down, Anne. I've been trying to get in touch with you. I'm glad you came. Look, Roger, I was sent here by my editor. He thinks the world wants news of its hero on the breakfast table each morning. Oh, that's very nice of him. I thought perhaps you'd come here to congratulate me. Congratulations. My editor doesn't think you have much chance of making good on the job, but you're good copy. And you don't think I'll make good either. That's beside the point. My job is to furnish news to your dear public. I'll be around a lot and I may get in your hair, but only with paper and pencil. I'm a reporter and you're my story. That's all there is to it. Funny, isn't it? The one person in the world whose opinion I really care about doesn't believe in me. Say, I'd be cheering louder than anybody if I thought you could fill that chair. I know I'm here by an accident. Knocking over Dixie Nelson doesn't any more make me a paragon of wisdom than flying a plane to Timbuktu. But there's something about this job that makes me feel I belong to it. It's like, well, like walking into a strange room and being certain you've been there before. Roger, I'm afraid, awfully afraid I'm still in love with you. But you're like a little boy shouting in the wilderness trying to put out the stars with a toy gun. Look, Ann, this is the break I've been waiting for. I've got to make good. Roger, you don't know what you're up against, and I do. You're up against a vicious syndicate, hiding in the dark, bleeding the city from the inside, stabbing it in the back. What chance do you think you've got? Well, there's a chance I might get Dixie Nelson to talk. And uh, there's another angle. What? The district attorney mentioned that David Turner had a daughter. That's not much to go on. Well, what do you expect? I've only been in the office uh, two hours. That's the trouble. If it had been two years, you might be halfway ready for it. Not two hours in because of a freak. Barnum started as a freak. And look what happened to him. How do you know where I'll wind up? In a cage, dear. A sign will tell people not to feed you peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> Roger! Oh, darling! Isn't it thrilling? Really, you're going places. I think it's all perfectly wonderful. Your, your secretary? Sorry, I didn't fit his lap. Well, just a minute, Anne. This is Miss Brooks, Miss Thompson. Not the Anne Thompson. Yes, and you must be the Mona Brooks. Oh, I'm sure there's nothing extraordinary about me, but you, Miss Thompson. Of course, I've read your column. It's quite interesting. In spots, thank you. If I ever do a story about you, Miss Brooks, I'll try to clean up the spots. Amusing creature, isn't she? Well, at least she's got end of her own. Why don't you? Don't I know what? Tell me what you know. First place, I haven't said anything. And in the second place, I don't trust coppers. Oh, but I'm not a copper. Cops, DAs, guys like you. There's no difference. You ask who's really responsible for my father getting bumped. Is that what you want to know? That's it exactly. All right, I'll tell you. Fine, go ahead. People like you, coming around here and promising him protection if he named the guys higher up. Protection. That's why he's dead. Because you guys lied to him. You sold him a bill of goods and he was fool enough to listen. But not me, copper. I'm no fool. So that's it. You're afraid. Am I? When the time comes, I'll show you how afraid I am. 
And I won't be asking anybody's help. I don't want you to get any wild ideas in your head, Miss Turner. They never work out. So you think it over very carefully. If you happen to change your mind, you can always reach my office by calling City Hall. And tonight I'll be at this number. Did Brooks know you were coming here tonight? Why, no. How did you know that was Brooks' telephone number? Uh, well, I don't, that is for sure. You see, there was a guy I used to work for Brooks, and he and I, the guy I mean, used to hit it off together once in a while, and... And that's how you knew the number? Sure. How else could I? But that isn't why you asked if Brooks knew I was coming here tonight. No, of course not. It, uh, well... Brooks is tied up with that Civic League, isn't he? Do you think I want that bun sticking their blue nose? Good night, Miss Turner. Remember, if you change your mind. Sure. I'll give you a call. Not that I know anything, but there's always a chance I might find something out. And if I do, uh, good night, Mr. Andrews. I'll be expecting to hear from you. Sure. Maybe sooner than you think. I have an idea it'll work out, Judge. He's young, aggressive, and inexperienced enough not to be tied down by too many set rules. Darling, we had simply a wonderful time. You really should have been there. You know the Blakes, don't you? Betty and Derek? Well, they can... How do you do, Mr. Brooks? I'm sorry to be late. Oh, I know. Wanted to make an entrance. Oh, you know Judge Hargrave, don't you, Andrews? Oh, yes, indeed. I'll never forget you, Judge. You threw my first case out of court. <laughs> well, I'm afraid I've forgotten. What was wrong? Everything. Complaint inadequately drawn, evidence insufficient, and as for irrelevance immaterials and objections sustained. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've traveled a long way since then, Andrews. Congratulations. Thank you. How things, Joe? We want to drink a toast to our special prosecutor. Oh, and um, make Mr. Andrews a Manhattan. He likes his short on vermouth. Seems to be pretty familiar with his likes and dislikes. Oh, uh, two bourbons and soda, please. <laughs> Come along, Roger. I have the honored spot reserved for you. Oh, suppose you give the toast, Judge Hargrave. Well, I propose this toast to Roger Andrews. Not only because he holds a position of trust, but because he has proven himself a hero in the best American sense of the word. An inspiration to the youth of the country. Well, uh, thank Be you. Be careful uh, what you say, darling. The press is snooping. Oh. Why, hello, Ann. Congratulations, Andrews. Thank you. Big job you have on your hands. I think it's up to every citizen to cooperate. I'm glad to hear you say so. And I'll try to do my bit by keeping Ann out of your hair. That'll give you nothing to worry about but spanking the bad boy. There's no necessity of being a martyr, Johnny, as far as ever wanting to get in anyone's hair. And particularly Mr. Andrews. Uh, uh, Mona, darling, may I borrow Roger for a moment? I want him to meet Grover Duncan, a friend of mine. You sure it's all right with you, Mona? Why, of course, darling. Why, I've been waiting all evening to dance with Mr. Gray. You don't mind, do you? Help yourself. He doesn't belong to me. Sweet of you. Shall we go? This is Robert Duncan, Roger Andrews. How do you do? I'm very happy to make your acquaintance, I'm sure. I've heard a great deal about you. No, Duncan, I've always claimed that new blood like Roger here is what we need to get the city out of a rut. The trouble is...
A woman's footprints. Are you sure? Positive. What is it, Andrews? What did you find? A book of matches. Afraid it won't be of much help. That's right, boss. The shot was fired from the outside. Yes, but maybe it wasn't meant for Brooks. Roger was standing beside him in the window pane, might have deflected the bullet. That's a humdinger, Ann. Underworld snarls defiance, strikes its special prosecutor. Now, wait a minute, Chief. There's no reason for making it tough on Roger. Oh, beg your pardon. That's all right, I'm through. I'll call you back just as soon as I have a talk with the police. It's all yours. Hello, this is Duncan. Brooks has just been shot. Hold on, there's nothing serious. It's just his arm. Now listen, the shot was fired through the French doors by a woman. A woman? Did anybody see her? No. That ought to be easy enough for you to guess. Certainly. Get hold of some of the boys right away. They'll have to get her before the cops do. She knows too much. What do you want? Miss Turner, where is she? I don't know. She left not more than an hour ago. You don't belong to that crowd that was here just ahead of you. No, I don't. What crowd is that? They said they were from the special prosecutor's office, looking for evidence. Either you're lying or someone's been lying to you. Now, look here, mister. Because I'm the special prosecutor. What evidence were they looking for? I don't know. They just turned things upside down and left. Did you tell them where they could find Miss Turner? No. I already told you I don't know where she is. She must have left a forwarding address. Well, she didn't. She just dropped her key on the desk and went. All in all, things are beginning to add up. We're liable to be surprised when we get the correct answer. In the first place, the Turner girl recognized the telephone number. But maybe she was telling the truth. Maybe she did have a boyfriend. That still doesn't explain why she should take a shot at Brooks. How do you know she wasn't taking a shot at you? Well, that doesn't make sense. She knows I want to help her. But why should she try to kill a guy like him? That's what I intend to find out. Listen, Andrews isn't as dumb as we thought. He's just about worked out the whole pattern. Stop worrying, will you? He has no case against us. If he'd pull us in on that kind of evidence, we'd make a laughing stock out of him. I'm not so sure. That boy knows his way around. Suppose he finds Carol Turner. At the time of Roger Andrews' appointment, we suggested that the public had better show its appreciation of his heroism by awarding him a medal and to place him in a position that he is in no way qualified to fill. The recent attempt on William Brooks' life proves our point. Not only has the underworld shown his contempt of our special prosecutor, but you must be very proud of yourself. Listen, I'm running a newspaper, and my job is to give people facts. That's no reason for skinning him alive. Oh, wait a minute. What's gotten into you? You didn't think he'd make good either. Why, this almost quotes you. I know that's just it. He'll think you were quoting me. I didn't think it'd make any difference, Anne. I thought you two were all washed up. If we weren't, we are now, thanks to you. There was nobody outside to say I couldn't, so I, I came right on in. That seems to be the privilege of the press. I want to congratulate you on your analysis of me. It doesn't leave much to the imagination. It wasn't my analysis, Roger. That's why I came here. I wanted to tell you about it. I didn't know there was any more to tell. I thought you'd given me both barrels. Oh, I know what you're thinking, and I don't blame you. 
thanks, but I'd be the last person in the world to deny the press its freedom. So you're going to insist on thinking I wrote that article? Oh, perhaps you didn't actually type it. But you believe I had something to do with it? What are you trying to start, Anne? I haven't asked for any apologies, but if you must know, of course I think you had something to do with it. I remember you told me once that I was a little boy shouting in the wilderness, trying to put out the stars with a toy gun. Well, the little boy has grown up. You're wasting your time. Well, I guess there's nothing more to say. Hello, Miss Thompson. Hey, what's wrong with her? Nothing. You've read this, I suppose. Yep, they've certainly got us on the fire. Yes, and they'll burn us to a crisp if we don't find Carol Turner. Funny about her, isn't it? Do you think they really grabbed her? I don't know. I've got a hunch she may be hiding somewhere. We've got to find her and make her talk. That's not going to be easy. I have a great idea, boss. Now, wait a minute. This is about Andrews again. But it isn't. That's all over. It's about these pictures our photographer grabbed at the David Turner murder while every other newspaper was asleep on the job. They're no good. We've used them. They're still good if we don't let them die in the morgue. We'll print them up in sets, see? Artistic sepia and give them away for coupons. Wait a minute. What coupons? The ones we're going to print in the Gazette. Front page, lower right-hand corner. No good. Too morbid. Maybe some of them are, but how about this one? Just before the shot was fired. The last living likeness of Turner. We'll play it up. Still no good. Nobody will want it. Oh, yes, they will. At least somebody will. Who? Turner's daughter, Carol. Well, that's fine. Then print up a set and take them to her. That's just the point. I can't. I have a hunch she's hiding out. Nobody knows where she is, and the authorities are going crazy trying to locate her. That's why it's a great idea. Authorities baffled, can't find key witness, Gazette finds her for them. Oh, no, Anne. If she's hiding out, she isn't going to stick her nose in here with any coupons. Of course not. She'll mail it in with a present address and 10 cents for postage. Well, maybe, but she'll use a phony name. Mm-hmm, exactly what I thought. So I got a sample of her handwriting from the landlady where she used to stay. Get me Lake, 507A2. Hello. Who wants him? How's that? Oh, just a moment. Roger telephone. Who is it? She didn't say, but she says it's about a Carol Turner. Carol Turner? Hello. Yes, what is it? Yes, I'm very much interested. Do you know where she is? 904 Spruce, Sunnyvale. She's using the name of Sally Saunders. Thanks. Say, who is this? What difference does it make? Listen, brother, I told you all I'm going to. I don't want to get mixed up in this no further, so suit yourself. Take it or leave it. Miss Turner, but this time you're going to tell me everything you know. Okay, Copper, go ahead. Force it out of me if you can. There isn't going to be any forcing. We're going to sit down over there and have a talk. Oh, no, Copper. Not me. That's too bad. Because it leaves me no alternative but to call the police and place you under arrest. And you will have to talk loud and fast. Arrest? What are you talking about? You haven't got anything on me. I'd call attempted murder something. Wait a moment. What murder? The attempted murder of William Brooks. I said, wait a minute, how do you know I... Who do you think you're bluffing, smart guy? There's no bluff, Miss Turner. 
You left your calling card outside the French doors. But if they thought it was There me. is no they. Only I know where this card came from, and I'd hoped it wouldn't be necessary to do anything about it. Well, shall we have our little chat? Yeah. Maybe we'd better. So after Brooks tried to double-cross him, my father got into his files. Not that he didn't know enough to cook him anyway, but he wanted the lowdown in Brooks' own handwriting. What kind of lowdown? All the deals. Who got the payoff, see? Brooks wrote it down in his black book, how much the cuts were and why. Where is this book? Maybe I could find it for you. But if I do, I wouldn't dare stay in this neck of the woods. Where would you go? I've got an aunt in Kansas City. If this book is as complete as you say, there isn't much more you could do for us. And you won't try to haul me before any grand jury, like they did my dad? Your testimony wouldn't be much good anyway. It would be ruled out as hearsay. Then it's a deal. If you're telling the truth, I won't bother you until I have Brooks and the others behind bars. And after that, I don't think any jury would be very hard on you. You'll have a chance to start with a clean slate. Okay. Here it is, Mr. Andrews. My father thought something might happen to him. That's why he gave it to me to keep. search the alleys for petty thieves. Sometimes we do invade ornate apartments when looking for a racketeer. But there is a line of respectability beyond which we seldom expect to find a criminal. Respectability is in itself vision. Add to this a position of trust among honest men who have organized themselves for the promotion of law and justice and you have some conception of the despicable hypocrisy with which the law enforcement agencies of this city have had to contend. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the state charges that William Brooks, while posing as the champion of justice, has conducted one of the most outrageous crime syndicates this country has ever known. Your Honor, with your permission, the state will call its first witness, Richard Allen. Mr. Allen, you may take the witness stand. And after you collected the money from this so-called protective association, Mr. Allen, you took it to Mr. Brooks's office? Well, not exactly, to an office next door to his, in the same building. Who owned that office? I'm not sure I know. Well, who was in charge of it? Mr. Brooks's secretary, usually. And you were accustomed to giving this money to his secretary? Yes, sir. Was Mr. Brooks ever present when you turned over this money? I don't remember. You know him, don't you, when you see him? Yes. Well, look about you, Mr. Allen. Do you see Mr. Brooks in this courtroom? There he is. You're a witness. You gave testimony before the grand jury, did you not? Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, it was primarily on your testimony that the indictment was voted. Well, I'm not so sure about that. Well, it was. Mr. Allen, you testified before the grand jury on June 16th. How long was it before that since you've had a regular job? I object, Your Honor. When the witness had or didn't have a job is entirely irrelevant. Objection sustained. I crave your indulgence, Your Honor. This question is in no way irrelevant to what the defense proposes to prove. We propose to show that a great crime is being committed in this courtroom today. I object. And will you may, Mr. Andrews. For we propose to show you that the ethics of truth and friendship are still held sacred here. 
And before this trial is over, we're going to show you what it means to betray the trust of a great friend and a great confidence. <laughs> Looks like Taylor's out to crucify Rogers. If there's a recurrence of this disturbance, I'll order the courtroom clear. Proceed with the witness. How long has it been since you've had a steady job? I object. Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. I don't know. I should say about six months. Then perhaps you can explain to the court how it happened that you deposited $500 in a bank the day before you testified before the grand jury. I object. Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. Well, it was payment of a debt. What debt? I can't answer that. Isn't it true, Mr. Allen, that that $500 was given you to testify in this case? If you please, Your Honor. That is a leading question, and I object. Well, so would I if I were you. <laughs> order! Order in the courtroom! Objection sustained. Your Honor, how am I to get at the truth? The witness admits that he received $500, quite coincidentally on the same day that he gave very valuable testimony. Yet when I asked him where he got it, he speaks vaguely of some debt. Why can't you tell what debt was discharged when you received the money, Mr. Allen? Because it was uh, just one of those deals. Haven't I the right to refuse to answer any question that might incriminate me? Such as receiving a bribe for perjured testimony? The bench is questioning the witness, Mr. Taylor. You have that legal right, Mr. Allen. Well, I'm through. Your Honor, I have certain evidence which I found it unnecessary to present to the grand jury. I had intended to hold it in abeyance, but since the defense implies that my last witness's testimony might be perjured, I wish, with your permission, to offer it now. I have here, Your Honor, a notebook, which once reposed in the defendant's files. It is filled with facts and figures, dates and amounts of payoffs, names and places, which will substantiate the testimony not only of my last witness, but of those that follow. Your Honor, I object. What proof have we that that book came from the defendant's files? Such proof is scarcely necessary since all the entries are in the defendant's handwriting. And we have expert testimony to substantiate that. With your permission, Your Honor. is a hoax, Mr. Andrews. The court isn't amused. But, Your Honor, that data... What data? These pages are all blanks. Come to say I told you so, you can spell it in neon lights. Isn't there something I can do? You've done a pretty good job. I'm just about where you said I'd be. Roger, you can't give up now. It isn't giving up. It's washed up. First official act of the governor in the morning will be to kick me out. You were right. I didn't belong here. The job was too big for me. No, it wasn't, Roger. You proved that this afternoon. This afternoon? Yes, you were on the verge of accomplishing what no one else has even approached. You... Roger, you've got to listen to me. You were wonderful. You've started a job. Finishing it means everything to the little people of this city. You're that one hope you can't let them down. You mean the little people that jeered at me as I left court today? No, Brooks has me where he wants me. I'm through. Through? You had Brooks where you wanted him, but he wasn't through. 
If you let him walk over you now, men like Dixon Nelson will be walking the streets free, unafraid to kill anyone who stands in their way. I'll bet he's over there in jail right now, laughing up his sleeve. Nelson. Dixie Nelson. Maybe if he weren't laughing. Maybe if he were frightened. Rats frightened easily. Give me the sheriff's office. Hello, Sheriff. This is Andrews. Yes, the special prosecutor. I want a couple of your men to bring Dixie Nelson to my office. That's right. I think I've got a lead that'll make him talk. Come on, Dixie. What's the idea? Where are we going this time of night? You've been invited to a little party. Come in. Here he is, Mr. Andrews. Fine. Sit down, Nelson. You boys will plant yourselves in the reception room and see that nobody enters the office. I'll give him back to you as soon as possible. What do you got up your sleeve this time, smart guy? This. Why don't you get wise to yourself? That's the oldest gag in the book. I've looked down too many rods to let that one scare me. Get up and walk, huh? I said, get up and walk. What's the idea? We're going for a ride. Okay. You sure the scenery's good? All right, Nelson, step in. Taken me. What are you going to do to me? Something funny here. They're gone. Me the sheriff's office and hurry. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Special prosecutor Andrews has been kidnapped from his own office by Dixie Nelson. Nelson apparently forced Andrews in the building by the back stairs. Andrews' official car has disappeared. The license number is... The license number is 10L481. Yes. Now listen, you've got to find them before the cops do. Round up all the boys and start every available car cruising. What do you want us to do then? Do? Shoot to kill. Andrews and Dixie too. All right, Nelson, this is as far as we go. You're not going to do anything to me. You can't, you. You can't do that. It'd be murder. They'd hang you for it. You're going to try to escape, Nelson, and she's going to shoot you in the back, just like you did her father. Now, start running. You're crazy. I didn't want to kill anybody. I didn't want to kill your father. It wasn't my fault. I had to. It's no use, Nelson. You can't hide behind Brooks. You don't know him. 
You don't know Brooks. I had to. He'd have killed me. Take me to him and I'll prove it to you, please. All right, we'll go there. We're wasting a lot of gasoline. Andrews could be out of town by now and gone. Let's drive over to Brooks and see what he has to say. It wasn't very smart of you, Andrews, taking Dixie out of jail. Perhaps. I seem to have been doing a lot of things lately that aren't smart. But Dixie here is smart. He talked. That doesn't interest me. If you don't get out of here, I'll be forced to call the police. That won't be necessary. They're already on the way. On the way? Yes, we had a young lady with us. We let her out to call them. Go ahead, Nelson. Tell him what you told me. I warned you, Brooks. I said I was going to have company. I hope they put you in a death cell right alongside of me. I want to see you and... Shut up, you fool. <coughs> Grab that gun. The car's parked outside. Better head for the highway. Yeah. There's the car and license number we're looking for. Step on it. I think that car's tailing it. Step on it. did a good job. And the special prosecutor announced today that Miss Turner returned voluntarily to the city and surrendered herself to his office. However, it is difficult to believe that she'll have much to fear from any American jury. Also, the two hoodlums that killed William Brooks and Dixie Nelson have been apprehended. Among other associates of Brooks who are under grand jury indictment are Cubby Carson and Grover Duncan. All this has been accomplished in an amazing whirlwind fashion by a young man whose name is on every tongue. Roger Andrews. His courage and honesty make him an inspiration to the youth of the country. If I ever hear that again. This is a great day for the little people, Roger. Ah, oh, you're right, Mrs. Riley. It was their fight and they won it. Such modesty, Mr. Andrews. I scarcely recognize you. 
That don't make no difference, lady. You don't know me, and I don't know you. This is America, the land of opportunity. You'll get a break. <laughs> <laughs> this is the only break I want. I knew you could be nimble with a blimey, Roger. I better go and get busy with the wedding cake. <laughs>